Stream Lounge, BevNet Live 2016, and enter Ray Latif, Managing Editor. How you doing, Marty? Doing well. I like the entrance. You look like you're holding it down. I am trying. I'm yeah. faking it pretty well, I think. so. Uh, <laughs> faking it pretty well. We're not going to fake it anymore. we got All Kim right. Page on here. Kim, great to have you. Thank you. Thank Kim you. is the VP of Marketing uh, and Innovation for Venturing and Emerging Brands, a unit of Coca-Cola. Yep. Thanks again for being with us. Thank you for having me. It's exciting. So uh, you recently came on about uh, six months ago? Uh, six months, exactly. Yeah, how's it been going so far? It's great. I mean, as, as you can imagine for us, with, with the awesome task of really understanding where this landscape is going. Yep. A lot of uh, excitement. We're probably in the most dynamic marketplace we've been. Um, and so for us, it's just for me, the first six months was really trying to get, find my footing, um, understanding where those big bets are and trying to identify uh, really the key areas where we think the company needs to um, either participate or even in, um, increase our level of participation in, in terms of some of these high growth opportunity areas. Yeah. So. A lot of uh, learning, a lot of going out, getting to uh, meet our venture brands and um, really understand what's most critical for them as they think about where they are in their phase of development. And so, as you can imagine, with a number of these brands, um, not really wanting to try to boil the ocean, but really figure out what's the most meaningful and impactful things that they could be doing, and definitely from a marketing and innovation standpoint. So it's exciting. Yeah. Marketing and innovation, you have a really important <laughs> job. Uh, you know, what's your background? How long have you been with Coke? I've been with uh, Coke for 16 years. I am a brand marketer um, at my core, uh, but more so in the last 10 years, more of a, a GM generalist, if you will. Um, don't necessarily separate innovation from marketing. I think in today's marketplace, you have constantly have to have an innovative approach mm -hmm. um, as you think about how we're going to um, not only maintain, but deliver transformative growth. And so I think if... Uh, while it's in my title, I think every organization has to be relentless in their pursuit of, um, you know, what's next and what's better and how do you kind of continue to innovate. Right. Uh, we saw a lot of really good innovation uh, for the uh, New Beverage Showdown. We had the 15 semifinalists yesterday. Mm -hmm. We've got six today. You're on the judging panel. Yeah. You saw three of them. What are your thoughts? You know, you've got to just step back and just pause and just really uh, congratulate these entrepreneurs in terms of what they're doing. Their ability um, just to even be invited to participate on the stage says that they're doing some great things, right? And so I think for us, um, specifically as judges, trying to give them very specific feedback that they can kind of take back. You know, it's such a prototype environment. Yep. Um, and so it's, it's, it's been exciting. I think um, they, uh, probably more so than in previous years, really understore the, understand the notion of storytelling. Yep. Um, and so you've seen a lot of really strong narratives about the origin of the brand, um, what they believe are their key points of difference versus other kind of products in the marketplace. And so I'm, I'm just constantly impressed, quite honestly. Yeah, I, it is impressive stuff. And you were great up on stage, too, giving great, uh, mm -hmm. uh, giving great advice. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back on at 1.30 for the second round and uh, the ultimate deliberation to decide who's going to win the whole thing. So pretty interesting stuff, pretty yep. exciting stuff. I've been taking up all the time. Marty, do you want to yes. win? Well, that? you know... Um, <laughs> You know, obviously, um, we've seen um, you know some some things that uh, some trends that maybe um, are going downwards in terms of the um, soda consumption and things mm -hmm. like that. So I was just wondering how much of a how has that shifted the strategy in terms of looking at um, you know innovations and brands yeah. and sort of more sort of looking to maybe counteract what you're seeing a decline in in other areas? Sure. I mean, I think for us as a company, you've got to look holistically across the entire portfolio. Obviously, um, the category hit wins from a sparkling standpoint. The reality is that, um, thankfully, a number of our sparkling brands are growing. Um, prior to this, I was leading our Sprite and Flavors portfolio. Um, and that um, both those, um, that portfolio has uh, now experiencing its fourth year growth. Um, but I say that to say that, yeah, yes, there's absolutely a shift in terms of where consumers are going in terms of what they're looking for, um, what are some of their motivations, what's you know driving them to purchase or not to purchase. And I think for us, holistically, we have to understand that, um, which is why VEB is so important, because it really does, um, I think, do a nice job in kind of rounding out uh, kind of the overall beverage, um, non-alcohol, uh, ready-to-drink beverage portfolio. Um, so it's exciting, and so uh, the good news for us under um, Scott's uh, leadership is that VEB is doing incredibly well and 
contributing above and beyond our fair share in terms of absolute revenue growth for the company. And so I think it just illuminates that it's not a one size fit all, but you do ha absolutely have to have a holistic view of the marketplace. And again, going back to uh, your uh, first question, it's figuring out where those big bets are. Uh, you can't play in every category and you shouldn't play in every category and so a lot of what um, uh, I've been trying to look at is uh, to really try to give a, a marketing lens to those opportunities in terms of where uh, we're going to kind of get the biggest return for our investment. Right. Well, I, something that is really cool that I've seen um, in marketing is uh, the recent Sprite campaign mm -hmm. with LeBron James. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. And uh, I think it kind of speaks a little bit to everyone's talking about reaching the millennial consumer yep. and it was really interesting the way that you guys used obviously a, a very well-known celebrity, yep. but the whole campaign is that he is not endorsing the actual drink. Yep. So just, I mean, as a marketing person, yeah. how, how did you guys come up with the idea to sort of, it seems like you're leveraging the celebrity, but in a different way that is not so much just do it because he says so. Yeah, I think what you heard today um, from Jody in terms of the watermelon water is um, understanding what the core proposition is and being and, and really ensuring that you're carrying that thread all the way through. Um, so as a brand, Sprite has always been about Listen, at the end of the day, we're just here to quench your thirst um, because Grant Hill drinks it is not going to make you a better basketball player. And so that notion of being very transparent about what Sprite is and isn't has been the core to the brand, um, quite honestly, almost 25 years ago. And, and so it rings true that it, to this notion of obey your thirst. And so when you hear um, such an icon like LeBron James just say, basically, at the end of the day, if you're thirsty, drink Sprite. I mean, it, it really is what it is. And so I think the spirit of what that brand is tapping into is just... Um, uh, being transparent, you know, like the product, it's clear it has nothing to hide, and it encourages consumers to be true to who they are. And if they're thirsty, grab a Sprite. And you guys got little Yachty to, to contribute <laughs> a little bit hurt. there. That didn't so, hurt. That did not hurt. I remember the, uh, the Grand Hill drink Sprite commercial. Yeah, and you remember that, right? Grand Hill drink Sprite, and the guy clangs <laughs> off the, uh, trying, to, yeah, trying to dunk on the, uh, on the hoop. Um, uh, about a year ago, we had your predecessor on, Rebecca Messina, yeah. who's moved on to uh, Beam. She's a CMO yeah. of Beam Global, awesome. a pretty amazing job. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I asked her about, you know, how VEB defines innovation. And I, I want to ask you, you know, how do you think VEB should define innovation? Yeah, I think, you know, again, um, there's some basic prim principles of innovation in terms of either you take something existing and make it better, or you try to figure out what's new and next. And so I think for us, it's... Um, We've got so many gr uh, areas in the company that's thinking about best practices and how you bring some renewed excitement. And I think for VEB specifically, we're about next practices. And so we are tasked with and have the license, quite honestly, to, um, to really look at where the category is growing. And so our lens on innovation is really about almost new to the world versus re-engineering things that are already in the marketplace. And so if you think about our core brands... Uh, they are focusing on kind of re-engineering or reimagining kind of what exists today. Um, and we are really focused on a longer view um, where the market is going. And so it's really about, um, at its core, figuring out what's going to be new to the world and how do we aggressively um, uh, participate in some of those opportunities. But, you know, above and beyond product, um, you know, I'm specifically tasked with understanding what modern marketing looks like today. Um, and so we have to be very innovative in that approach um, you know, thousands more uh, beverages in the marketplace than it was even, you know, a couple of years ago. And so everyone's trying to get that share of mind and stomach. And so you just have to be innovative in, in, in end to end, quite honestly, across everything that you say and do. Yeah, uh, we have about less than a minute left. And yeah. I do want to follow up on modern marketing, but mm -hmm. I think we have to do that at another time. <laughs> We'd love to. Yeah, because uh, while you're here, I'm going to put you on the spot. Yep. You know, so uh, I asked a couple of folks from VEB, you know, what they're looking at in terms of categories. And I heard dairy alternatives. I heard craft sodas. <laughs> what uh, what are we going to see in terms of investment, advising, sort of? Uh, w w am I am I on the right track? Yeah, you're definitely on the right track. I think for us, I mean, we've we've got um, five or so categories that we're really interested in, and I think you've named a couple. Um, healthy digestion continues to be an area, but I will say the one that I'm most excited about is the notion of global traditions and wisdoms. And so you see even some of the drinking vinegars tapping into a lot of those global wisdoms. And, and so I think as, as you know, the Coca-Cola company operating in 200 plus countries, we should be in a really nice position to be able to tap into what's happening globally around the world and how do you bring that to the forefront in terms of beverages. Healthy digestion. I think I know where you're going with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kim, this has been great. Yeah, no, I'm really likewise. happy you're here, and I'm really looking forward to uh, the second round of the New Beverage Showdown. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Thanks Kim. so much. Okay. All right. Thanks, Marty. All right. Thank you. Okay.